Our last speaker is a fellow at yaqeeninstitute.org. Her name is Sister Tasneem al qiq and she's actually from this area. Uh, Sister Tasneem is, uh, has been, mashallah, one of, our, um, one of our greatest contributors at Yaqeen, and it's been a pleasure to have her contribution. She wrote her first uh, publication on the treatment of Muslim minorities. So you can look it up, inshallah. She has her bachelor's in early Christianity. She's from Michigan, and she's doing her PhD at Georgetown University under Dr. Jonathan Brown. So we'd like to invite uh, Sister Tasneem Al-Qiq to share a few words, inshallah, about some of the things that she does with Yaqeen Institute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So as Sheikh Omar just introduced, my name is Tasneem al -Qiq, and I am in the area now doing Islamic studies full time. And I want to share a couple stories of why Yaqeen is so important to me. So during my first semester of graduate school, I was enrolled in an introductory Sharia course with Dr. Jonathan Brown, my advisor. And it was open to both graduate students and undergraduate students. And for the first day, there was a lot of students because they wanted to, you know, backpack the class, check it out, see if they'd like it. And so it was a little packed. So as the class was going on, we were just doing general topics, general overviews, just so the students could get a sense of what to expect for the semester. And so about halfway through the class, a student shoots his hand up in the air to ask a question. And so Dr. Jonathan Brown picks on him and says, go ahead, ask your question. And very blatantly says, well, isn't Islam an anti-Semitic religion? And Dr. Jonathan Brown, if anyone has heard him speak before, you, you can just see the look on his face. He looks a little incredulously and says, excuse me? He's like, well, Islam is anti-Semitic, the things they've done to the Jews. And so he stops, and he looks around the whole classroom, and it's quite a packed classroom, and he says, if anyone can give me one example, I'm talking about 1,500 years of opportunities to look for an example, just one example of how Islam is anti-Semitic, of an instance in which Islam targeted Jews for their being Jewish, give me an example. In fact, I'll give you extra credit. Any one of you guys, you have the whole semester, I'll give you extra credit if you can give me an example. And here I'm thinking to myself, this is my very first semester of graduate school. I've got seven years ahead of me, and this, is, this just happened. And at that moment, I you know, kind of sat up in my seat feeling so proud, thinking to myself, that's what I want to be. I want to have that knowledge, I want to have that confidence to the extent that I can face any question like that. The problem what we are facing today in our society, the problem that our youth are facing most importantly, is the fact that we're lacking knowledge in our religion and therefore we're lacking confidence in our religion. So when someone goes up to someone who's 15 or 16 or 25 or 40 and says Islam is an anti-Semitic religion or Islam treats others X, Y, Z manner, that's a negative manner, we don't know what to do, we, we panic. And we think to ourselves, maybe it's true. Maybe there is an example. What exactly you know, does this religion teach? And that little drop of uncertainty spreads like wildfire. And at times, we don't really understand how much of an impact that doubt grows inside of our minds until it paralyzes us to the extent that we're so obsessed with this fear of, well, maybe hijab isn't fault, or maybe, you know, women are treated wrongly in Islam. And because of that fear, despite the fact that we remain Muslim most of the time, and unfortunately a lot of times people leave Islam, but despite the fact that we remain Muslim and remain wearing hijab and doing our activities, that fear stops us from doing so much more. We have hundreds and hundreds of years of Muslim history, in which Muslims were at the forefront of sciences, they were at the forefront of all the contributions and inventions. They weren't at the forefront because of some genetic, you know, mutation in which they were extra smart or whatever it was. They were at the forefront because they weren't preoccupied with, does Islam say this or does Islam say not? You know, they had that knowledge. They had that understanding, and because of that understanding, they had the confidence in order to move beyond those things that are bogging our minds. 
And so it's very, very important to really accept the fact that we need to do something about it. And that's what's so exciting about Yaqeen. Uh, alhamdulillah, I'm involved in a program that's hosted during the summer for youth. And the purpose of this program is to bring youth that are 15 to 19 years of age at an intensive where they'll spend three weeks learning about law, Islamic law, about the tafsir of the Quran, about aqidah, or creed. And throughout these three weeks, they have the opportunity to spend one-on-one -on -one time with speakers and scholars and teachers to ask these questions. And so during the second year of the program, what happened was that you know, after a couple days when they started getting comfortable with the teachers, they started to ask those questions that were really like stuck in their minds. Things that they had heard in high school or they learned during college or they watched during a TV show and heard on the media, whatever it was. And so it was about day two of the intensive and a 15 year old, a 15 year old asked the question, why does Islam allow concubines? And I'm thinking to myself in the corner, what's a concubine? I didn't, I didn't know what a concubine was at the age of 15, that's for sure. And I realized it's getting bad. Our situation is not improving, and we really need to do something about it. If these are the concerns that are at the top of a 15-year-old's mind, how is he going to be able to contribute to society? And so alhamdulillah, what, what the point of the program is really is to have that opportunity to learn and to engage. And that's exactly what our society needs. And after he all of those students had three weeks to learn and to engage, I had phone calls and text messages afterwards. These students went on to pursue Islamic studies, whether it was at Qalam or Zaytuna. A lot of them started doing pre-medical studies at college. The point is, is that they went back, and when they called me and they talked to me, they said, guess what? We just started a halaqa. Guess what? I'm running for student council. Guess what? I'm doing X, Y, Z for my community. Because what? Because they now had that knowledge, they had that confidence to move beyond that paralyzation. They had that confidence to say, I know who I am as a Muslim. I'm proud to be who I am. And if someone tells me otherwise, I know my place in society. And my place in society is to build my character and to contribute to my community. And so that's what I'm really excited about Yaqeen Institute. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide those resources. We're trying to provide those videos, those uh, very various engaging media platforms in order for people who just have a simple question and they don't know the answer to, to provide that outlet for them. And I'm also really excited because one of the upcoming series that Yaqeen is starting is a women's series female figures throughout Islamic history who have contributed to their society and who have made a difference. So I hope you guys can look forward to that and to all of the work that Yaqeen is doing. And inshallah, as a result, once you guys engage with this work, once you contribute to this work, we provide outlets for live Q&A in order for you to have that opportunity for discussion, in order for you to grow as well. Once we, you all engage and once we are able to grow inshallah, that will be the solution, bi-idhnillah, for our youth and for our future generations. So please make dua for yaqeen, please stay engaged, and inshallah, uh, we will all benefit. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.